Hi, my name is Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cool plants and author of Saving the World with the Home Garden. And here we are now in my backyard orchard where I'm starting to create, and I want to share this with you, the espalier pomegranate fruit trees here in our backyard orchard. We've already pretty much planted out all of the garden space that we have available, but through espalier, I'm able to fit three more fruit trees in this very tight space. And I'm gonna share with you a little bit of what's going on and how we've created row after row after row and of a high density, ideal for the backyard home orchard, where the goal is to get flavors of all the different fruits and enjoying harvesting fruits, hopefully from month to month throughout the garden year by strategically planting those fruits that'll offer their maximum yields in a particular month. So this area just behind me on this raised bed section of our garden has historically been the place that we'd grow our tomatoes in the vertical fashion using these posts that are here in front of me and then simply stringing the top and then dropping the lines and allowing these single double and triple vine grow in a vertical fashion on this wall capitalizing on the sunlight offering plenty of fertilizer and making sure all the elements are available for maximum flower and ultimately fruit and yield production and then you can see that just behind it, gonna follow me, is where I've got a row of three of the Dave Wilson, specifically Zager genetic fruit trees. And for many of you that have been following us over the last couple of years, I had the honor and the privilege of meeting the late Floyd Zager. And these are some of his pride and joy fruit trees that he's been growing and strategically hybridizing in a natural fashion some of the best tasting fruit trees, the things you cannot buy at the store, we're growing here in the backyard home orchard. And this should be something that inspires and motivates you to consider growing the things such as these pomegranates, which I'm gonna share with you momentarily, that you can't find at the store. And that's the reason we're bringing them into the backyard home orchard. So we've got a row of fruit trees that are capitalizing on all of this light in this upper raised bed, we've got another row of several fruit trees, starting with this ice cream banana. And we've got a container over here with roots that are not competing with the ice cream banana roots that are down below, a Fuerte avocado tree in container, as well as some basil that the family's enjoying. You can also see between the two fruit trees, I've got a few loquats and containers capitalizing on the morning sun. These are in the process of being transplanted to other gardens in the community. Over here, we've got our three in one grafted apple tree and a couple more grafts in the making. Here we are in spring using the approach grafting techniques, which I've also taught many of these links you'll find below this video if you wanna um, learn more about some of the things that you're seeing here. We got blueberries, check these out, that we're enjoying for the last several weeks and we're picking them as they ripen and we'll continue harvesting blueberries for the next couple of weeks. But you can see that we've got a container over here and a second container on the other side of the fruit tree capitalizing on this filtered light and check out all of that fruit. And then last but not least on this particular row is our 10 in one grafted fig tree. Grafted with 10 flavors of figs, just some general green varieties, black varieties, brown varieties, the tiger panache variety. And just so you can see, I'm sure you've seen some green figs over there. Off on this side, you can actually see the raspberry latte variety of fig. Check this out. So in this tight area, which is measuring only, if you come a little closer, you can see how narrow this planting bed is. It's only two feet wide, and it just measured about 15 feet deep. And here I've got three of my Meyer lemons. These are actually on standard rootstock. You would think semi-dwarf would be preferred, but Meyer lemons are very compact growers compared to if this was a Eureka lemon, they would already be about 20 to 30 feet tall. But Meyer lemons are very compact, bushy naturally by nature, um, compact and slower growing, more dense. And what we've done here is done what's called a freestanding espalier. And I'm gonna show you a couple links also down below where we've been harvesting over a hundred pounds of lemons off of these three um, Meyer lemons that are on this particular row. And what I wanna share with you as a quick helpful tip is to not use shears shears will end up creating a very dense compact structure and block out the necessary light within the layers which is going to be very important for espalier specific traditional espalier which we're going to be doing with the pomegranate tree 
This here is more known as a freestanding espalier, meaning we're growing it pretty tight. It's only two feet wide between that growing bed and we've kept it very close to the fence and any growth that comes off and even these beautiful, check out these baby lemons. And then just behind it, these have probably bloomed about two to three months ago. And then in about six to nine months, he got fruit. And again, medium sized fruit and baby fruit. But you can see the fences over here. And we've used the fence occasionally to sometimes tie the branches back. I'm trying to see if there's any ties. Most of them have come loose, but you can see like there's a lot of branches that are really close and tight to the fence. However, there are some that are starting to block this particular pathway, such as these. And even though they've got fruit on them, we're gonna have to tighten this up. And what I'm doing is simply cutting back to the next nearest branch, right there. And this will come off. And we're gonna continue that to, again, the next nearest branch. As long as you maintain this practice throughout the year, you're not gonna feel so guilty cutting off medium-sized fruit. But these babies, again, they're growing in the wrong direction. If there's an area to be filled, we can tie, and we're gonna be talking about time practice momentarily, but I'm actually gonna take this off. And at the same time, by alleviating all of this fruit density, we're gonna end up having more larger, more delicious, more successfully fruiting fruit on the rest of the plant, as there's only so much fruit any particular tree can support. And so the goal again, improving light penetration air penetration and at the end of the day that's going to result in maximum fruit yield and also disease resistance within the plant structure overall creating a much longer healthier lasting fruit tree on your property let me share with you another lesson to create the traditional espalier the first thing you're going to need to do is put up some posts just as we've done over here and these are four by four posts and again i've got another four by four post running across the top and then back down each of these are about six feet apart and I've got a second and a third section behind that and then it continues going up the property incline as well so there's a lot of opportunity to be now taking advantage of this additional light space there's plenty of fertilizer offering again all the minerals and nutrition the plants need for optimal growth flowering and ultimately fruiting and giving us delicious yields of fruit we're going to be feeding this plant we're going to be feeding the neighboring tree we're gonna be feeding the other trees and plants on the property, even in between some of the trees. And while these trees are still young, I've even got a squash plant here in the ground. And again, it's capitalizing on light, has all the nutrition it needs, and it will be very productive and fruitful this year. But as the trees continue to grow, as their roots continue to expand, and as they're competing even more so for water and nutrients and light, which is also very important. And the reason a lot of people fail at creating fruitful trees is that competition between the trees. But what's gonna happen here with this espalier pomegranate tree is we're gonna allow it to grow tall and wide in this fan-shaped structure, whereas the neighboring pluary, which is that Zager fruit tree, we're going to be growing in a more compact area, allowing the light to reach a lot of the boundaries and, and also penetrating through the tree by making sure that we also thin this tree throughout the year to allow light to come through to the benefit of the pomegranate tree so that each tree in its row will capitalize on all that it needs again in water nutrition through fertilizer as well as light for optimal performance in a high density compact garden and together we're going to be watching that success from year to year so for those of you that have not yet already subscribed do take the minute right now to be sure to subscribe and hit the push bell notification to get those reminders as soon as the information is released. In addition to the wood structure that I've decided to use, and you can also use metal and you can use a variety of other products, including just stakes. And ultimately what's gonna happen is once the branches are trained and the wood is hardened over the course of a year or two, you can pretty much remove the stake and that espalier should be pretty sturdy on its own. Some support may be necessary and you're gonna notice as we take a tour throughout the garden, there's gonna be different parts and different trees that do have still some stakes on them and are being used strategically 
um, not just one to support fruit, but also to help guide and steer particular branches to grow in a specific direction. Some of the branches here on the property you're gonna notice are guided. One, it could be for aesthetics, and another one is obviously to capitalize on light, because as long as there's light on that branch when it comes to flowering, it's gonna end up also supporting maximum fruit yields from year to year. What I'm also gonna be using later on is, is this product I found on Amazon called the B-L-I-K-A Globe String Suspension Handling Kit. And I will put the link down below in the description, but I'm gonna be using this as well to create an even stronger structure between the wooden beams and to use the cable to also further direct branches above and below. And just as we demonstrated with the freestanding Espalier Meyer Lemon Tree, what we're gonna do is, and it's very important, you may have seen this more regularly, is when it comes to your grapes, is that you'll see that there's usually about a foot, maybe two feet, maybe three feet between sections, because the goal again is to make sure that each branch has its own light zone. And as you notice also with the freestanding Meyer lemon tree is that there's a good amount of light penetration, which results in good maximum fruit yields. As I said, we're enjoying over a hundred pounds of Meyer lemons off of those trees every year for the last four to five years since those trees have been planted. So as you can see, these younger branches are very easy to train, but the older ones, not so much. Let me show you. So this here behind me is my four in one olive tree, which also through training was able to capitalize on four flavors of table olives. Check this out. Through the power of using stakes and training, I was able to pull these branches into this vase shape pattern. And the importance of the vase shape is to make sure that you have excellent light penetration and air penetration. And by creating these four branches in this vase shape structure, each of them are thriving. Over here is a variety of table olives from Italy. Over here, Greece. To my right, Spain. And this one over here, my most newest graft, is the Mission Olive, the California Olive. and. All of them, again, through training, if you take a look at those green stakes, I know they're not so easy to see, we're training these branches to grow in the direction that we want them to thrive. Again, capitalizing on light, having good air circulation for optimal flowers and ultimately fruit yields that we're gonna be enjoying very soon. If we continue over here on this side, you can see that we're still using also stakes to support and train this manzanilla olive, which, on its own would have never taken this structure, as you can see, has been bent into place and trained to grow and capture and maximize on all of this light abundance that's in this particular growing zone over here. So this particular tip is that young branches, whether it be in the first year, sometimes even second year, they're easy to train. You can put them in any direction. The wood will eventually harden and you'll have that structure that you're seeking. These palm trees have been here for a few years and you can see that they're beginning to grow and I'm starting to train them as well. Check this out. This here is a twin king palm tree and the goal with this one is to grow the one on my left in a 45 degree fashion. Again, the only value is aesthetics and secondly, so it can capitalize on its own light and its own area away from this primary vertical one that we're gonna to allow to continue growing in the upright position. We could easily design them also to be pulled equally at 45 degree angle so that they're both at an angle. But again, this is the aesthetic part. I want this one growing vertically up. I want this one at a 45 degree angle to my left. And we've already started using some twine over here, as you can see, just using nylon string and a stake that's to my left over here. And what we're doing, just like braces, is we're just taking it down a few degrees every single month, allowing the roots to reset and allowing the wind from month to month loosen it up as it comes through our property. And then we're able to pull it a few more degrees at a time. We wouldn't take it to the ideal location immediately, especially at this stage, as we don't want to damage its root system and ultimately break the tree. So we're going to um, angle the plant and what we're going to do to protect the underlying cambium and bark layers from the constricting nylon string is we're gonna be using a old hose. We're gonna be reusing that material to help protect the underlying bark and cambium layers. So let me share with you that helpful tip.
So now putting this hose material against a tree is gonna help prevent this damage, which is already starting, but we're not gonna allow it to continue. But you can see the nylon twine that's resting and again with the occasional wind that's causing it to sway is taking its toll against the tree trunk and ultimately the underlying cambium. And what we're gonna wanna do to protect it is we're gonna be now using the hose where that area of stress is dispersed better over this larger, thicker hose material. So we're gonna just bend that in place and now secure it against the stake and try to get it a few degrees lower. So you can see that we got probably another five degrees further to the left. And again, just like braces, every few weeks, maybe a month, we'll come back and try to tighten it a little bit more, but right now it's like pretty tight. And again, the goal is to create that 45 degree angle that we're hoping to achieve here. Let's continue back into the backyard, follow me. So what's so cool about the backyard orchard is you get to grow the things that you can't buy. And one of the things that you can't buy is health and nutrition, obviously being the stuff you grow at home, you're gonna hopefully be growing organically so that you're growing something that's gonna offer health and all of the nutritional benefits to your family and the people you share it with. But for backyard growers such as you and I, this is an opportunity to grow the things that you cannot typically find at the local marketplace. And these are pomegranates that are specifically taste proven favorites. The other cool thing about these pomegranates is they have very small to very like almost non-detectable seeds in there. So for my children, one of them likes to spit out the seeds, which is a lot of effort, but loves the flavor. The older one has you know, grown accustomed to eating pomegranates. The goal is to introduce them to different varieties. And these are pomegranates that are specifically known for having very small seeds, almost non-detectable, and having maximum flavor, taste you can't find at the local grocery store. And check out a few of these favorites that I found recommended. One by Dave Wilson Nursery and also my good friend, grower, Gary Matsuoka of the Laguna Hills Nursery in Orange County. And if you take a look here, this here is one of the varieties, the Parfionka. And over here, the Desertini. And then this one over here, the Ariana. So I'm gonna be planting this Ariana pomegranate in the ground in this general location and then doing the espaliers, I've already generally created the structure with those other two. And I'm gonna be sharing you this more step-by-step -step process of creating the espalier out of this bushy Ariana pomegranate. And if you want the specific tips just to save time so we can focus more on espalier, but I already demonstrated my top seven tips to planting a fruit tree, which was published on April 12th of 2021. And that link you can find in the video description below, but I'm now gonna put this in the ground and I will see you after I get it planted. So the next thing we're gonna do is using twine, we're gonna pull the primary branches apart. There's about three to five primary branches and what I wanna share with you is how naturally compact and dense these pomegranate trees are. And the reason this structure is so successful is it's helping to protect the underlying tree trunks and branches from first, second, and third degree sunburns. Whereas when you take a look at the espalier tree, and this applies to virtually all fruit trees in the espalier position, is they're exposed to a lot of sun and they begin to burn. First, second, and third degree sunburns, whether it be citrus or olives or pomegranates or roses or anything in this fashion, as you can see, there's so much more light penetration happening and it's all happening on the south and southwest side of the tree where it's all day long exposure to light. In the spring, we're talking about 12 plus hours by summer, 14 hours, and all of that wood, even if it's not cracking and damaging as we've explained and shared over the many years with other fruit trees, there is at least first degree burns and what's happening when they're burning is that it is taking away from its ability to put its energy towards growth and flowers and fruit. You don't want it to be putting all that resource and energy into 
repairing sunburn damage. And that's the reason most of the fruit trees you'll see here on the property are whitewashed the day you plant a tree. We're simply gonna wrap it around one of the branches like so. And then we're gonna pull. And now we're gonna do the same thing with this side branch. We're gonna end up training it and pulling it in this direction. And as you can see, we've now opened the entire tree, tree structure. This middle branch will allow to grow in the vertical position. So this will be branch number one, two, three, and we're gonna be training them. And as you can see, the younger growth, very easy to control and manipulate. We can bend it virtually in any direction we'd like to. So now that we've got the secure cable in place, we can now use it to train our pomegranate tree in this spalier fashion. So what we're gonna do, simply using again, twine, you see that I'm using a lot of twine, but there's a lot of other products I'm gonna share with you in just a second that you can also use to accomplish the same. But we can now go with the twine like so. And again, we're securing the tie against the cable and not against the tree so that the tree can grow. We're gonna keep a little bit of space so that it can grow over the growing season and we're just going to do a nice loose knot training this branch to stay against the cable in the espalier line and out of our walkway that i'm currently standing in and then here we go we can take our paper scissors now cut off the excess twine and it's virtually inconspicuous what we're doing and this branch is now exactly where we want it to be so another product that you can use for more sensitive growth, especially that in the first year is to use something like this, which is a plastic tape. And what we're gonna do is simply cut off a piece. And this is a product you're probably more familiar with as a lot of professional growers will use a plastic tape such as this to stake their trees instead of using a twine as this will give the plant a lot more wiggle room and flex out of the way as the plant grows in case it's gonna be ignored for too long of a period. But in this garden, we're very careful visiting and making sure that none of the branches are being constricted by the ties that we're using to secure the plants in place. So you can see how simple it is once you have a structure in place to keep your plants growing horizontally or vertically against the cispalier structure. And here we go. And the next branch will grow up and then we'll trade it to go in this direction. It's that simple. The Ivory Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard products originated with the color white. OMRI certified for organic gardening with protection against damaging summer sunburn, insects, and rodents eventually evolved to colors brown and green and currently now is available in colors gray and gray. So there's a total of five colors that the products come with. The color gray you can find on Amazon. I'm gonna put the link down below and demonstrate to you shortly. And then the newest, latest and greatest color is color grayish. The color grayish, as the name implies, is a combination of gray and beige and helps give a natural look to your trees instead of maybe the traditional white look that you'd find on a whitewashed tree. And now we're gonna protect the plants from damaging summer sunburn. If you have no issue with pests, where the issue is to repel damaging insects and rodents, then you may wanna go with the blue label, which is an oil-free option and, and will offer your plants that protection from damaging summer sunburn and in the winter from damaging winter sun skull. So let's go and whitewash, protecting our plants with the Ivory Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard, color gray. So the goal when applying the product is to go all the way down to the base and work your way up. And you can see, this is a night light protection. It's organic, unlike latex paint and tar-based products, which eventually, as the plants grow, will not contaminate your soils like latex and tar-based products will. And the product also dries on porous. It's a breathable product, which allows the exchange of nutrients and minerals through the product. And if there's any pruned branches, it won't 
result in rot on those coated surfaces as would happen if you're using a latex or tar based product. So I hope you've enjoyed this lesson brought to you by Ivory Organics on Espalier. And if so, be sure to give us that thumbs up. And most importantly, share us with your gardening friends and family. And if you happen to have an Espalier gardening lesson on your YouTube channel, be sure to share that with us in the comments below. I'd love to see what you've done and hopefully you'll inspire our garden as well as many viewers in regards to what can be possible with the Espalier garden with maximizing the number of fruit trees you can have growing happily in a limited garden space and also if you haven't already subscribed be sure to subscribe and hit the push bell notification to stay connected to all of these gardening lessons as soon as they become made available and as always keep growing with ivory organics and wishing you all happy gardening